shall we begin? Let the games begin. All right, all right, all right. A new age has begun. An age of freedom. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is the chopper! This is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian Renteria, and this is the Movie Pit Podcast, where we talk about all the big, breaking movie news items of the week. Hello. It will sound, I don't know how this will sound to you guys, but the uh, I'm recording in a weirder room this week, so I apologize for that. But uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, of course, we talk about all the big movie news items, talk about the movie trailers, or spotlight trailer anyway. And then we'll, of course, talk about the movies that are out in theaters and streaming this weekend for all your viewing pleasures. Uh, I'm a little out of it this week. I apologize for that. (laughs) I uh, I didn't sleep well. And uh, probably recording a podcast is probably a bad idea when you don't sleep well. But I'm going to do it anyway because I'm a glutton for punishment. So (laughs) let's get to the podcast. Of course, like I mentioned, we're going to start off with the trailer, our trailer spotlight of the week is, of course, the first trailer for the anticipated third outing of Creed, Creed 3. Dropped the trailer this week, and it looks pretty, pretty good. The movie will follow Michael B. Jordan's Adonis Creed and the rivalry that starts from his recently released from prison childhood friend Damien, played by Jonathan Majors. Tessa Thompson returns as Adonis' wife, and Felicia Rashad will also return as Adonis' mother. The movie is also directed by Michael B. Jordan, who will be making his feature directorial debut himself, which is pretty cool. The movie, like I mentioned, looks pretty good. Uh, it seems like in between the events of Creed 2 and Creed 3, Adonis has really taken off in the boxing world. And he's, you know, he mentions that um, he's made he's made a name for himself and he's made a career for himself, um, you know, getting out of the shadow of his father and of Rocky. Um, Rocky gets a mention. Rocky will most likely not appear in the movie. It seems like Sylvester Stallone is not going to appear in the movie at all. Um, unless they surprise us with a, you know, surprise cameo, but it seems like, uh, Stallone is pretty much done in terms of Rocky for the Creed movies anyway. We know there's a whole thing with him and the producers and, and him wanting the rights back to, um, to Rocky so he can make another movie. But regardless of that, uh, it, it seems like, um, it, it does seem like, uh, this is going to be a Creed movie through and through. Um, and, and you re- that said, you know, it seemed like in Creed 2 that Rocky's story was pretty much done, at least in the Creed movies. That kind of, you know, really um, put a bow on that. So uh, th- this being his own solo outing makes sense, especially considering, you know, what he said in the movie and or in, the, in the trailer and presumably what he'll say in the movie as well. It, it looks really good. Jonathan Majors <laughs> looks, you know, obviously everyone is super thirsty for Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan um, just showing off their their peak physical, you know, physique in in set photos and the posters that came out, which are pretty cool, and, of course, the, the trailer itself. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. It looks like, um, for at least from the trailer, it looks like uh, Damien, Jonathan Majors' character, was also a boxer, and he kind of feels that uh, Adonis took his chance away from him, uh, from, from what it looks like. So, uh, nice little rivalry there. It makes sense. And it's not too convoluted to what, you know, what, what you can tell with the third Creed movie, uh, especially considering, you know, what they've done already. You know, obviously trying to live up to his father's name in the first one. Second one continues to live up to his father's name, but also deal with, you know, the past of not only his father's work with and Rocky's work as well with the Drago the Drago's son this one is all really just about him and him finally finding his place and seeing if he can stay there and you know come out of the shadows of who his father was and who Rocky was having those connections to him uh and this kind of being his own his own thing he, he wants to strip that away and he wants to prove that he is Adonis Creed himself not Apollo Creed's son just 
Adonis Creed, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, trailer looks great. I, I can't wait to see what they do with the whole movie. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait a little bit. The movie will come out on March 3rd of next year. I think it was supposed to come out earlier, uh, later this year. I think it was supposed to come out like in November and then they pushed it back to March. So um, yeah, there you go. March 3rd next year, Creed 3. Definitely look forward to that. So that's our trailer spotlight. Of course, there's other trailers that came out this week. Those will all be linked down below in the description slash show notes area for all you guys to go uh, take a look at and watch if you want to go uh, see some of the trailers that dropped this week. So let's move on to the movie news items of the week. I don't know why my voice got all, got all high pitchy like that. I apologize. So the first movie news item of the week, this is something that was reported late last week, pretty much after the podcast went up, but it was only reported by one outlet and that was Slash Film. And it seemed like over the weekend and at the beginning of the week, it was confirmed pretty much everywhere else. And that is that Harrison Ford has officially joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ford will take over the role of General Thunderbolt Ross or Congressman Ross, as uh, he was in, in Civil War, from the late great William Hurt. His first appearance will be in Captain America: New World Order. Of course, he will also appear in uh, he'll appear as the character in Thunderbolts, which in the comics was a team created by Ross himself. That uh, was comprised of super villains that were hired by the government. Obviously, we have our Thunderbolts lineup already that was announced at D23. So there is that. The fourth Captain America movie will see the return of Anthony Mackie as Sam Wilson, a.k.a. our new Captain America. Confirmed cast members as of right now include Danny Ramirez, who played Joaquin Torres in the Disney Plus series Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, it's being rumored that he's going to be the new Falcon in the movie. Also coming back from the Disney Plus series is Carl Lumbly, who played Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Bradley in the series as well. And as of now, the last confirmed name is Tim Blake Nelson, who is reprising his role as Samuel Stearns from The Incredible Hulk and may finally get to play the villain, the leader, who is predominantly a Hulk villain. But the fact that he's coming back in a Captain America movie, very interesting. And considering who the leader is in the comics and kind of his goal, uh, I think New World Order, the subtitle for Captain America, makes a little bit more sense, um, considering, you know, what route they take with that. Uh, Julius on, uh, Anha, I think that's how you pronounce the last name. I apologize, but that's not how you pronounce it. He directed Cloverfield Paradox, and Luce will be directing uh, New World Order, which currently has a release date of May 3rd, 2024. Ford, um, of course, will next be seen in Indiana Jones 5, which comes out next year on June 30th. But Ford taking over for William Hurt, and that's kind of cool. I think, you know, the, the whole fact that Harrison Ford <laughs> is joining the MCU is interesting. You know, there's already memes uh, of uh, fake interviews of, of Ford, uh, you know, talking about the MCU and talking about the, the new movies he's in. with Because, uh, you know, obviously Harrison Ford, um, if you've ever seen an interview with Harrison Ford, especially like on Nerdy Topics, uh, he's going to be a little difficult. And I think some of it is him just playing along and some of it is probably him being, you know, real. He doesn't know anything about these um, nerdy tidbits. So getting Harrison Ford is very interesting. It's a very big get for for, for Marvel in general, um, especially considering that he may be a character that we see pop up sporadically throughout, you know, the, uh, the, from the MCU movies like Captain America and, and Thunderbolts and, you know, potentially something else down the line. But it's also a big get for Captain America, uh, New World Order. Obviously, you know, the Captain America movies have kind of prided themselves on, you know, getting big names. Obviously, uh, Winter Soldier had Robert Redford, which was a big get, you know, and even though he was only in essentially one movie and, you know, not counting the, uh, the flashback to, uh, the flashback in Endgame, that was still a massive get for Marvel and for, you know, the movie itself. So getting someone like Harrison Ford, a veteran actor, an actor that everyone you know, knows and, and has a certain weight to it and, you know, has a built-in fan base, getting, you know, putting, you know, just imagine Harrison Ford in a Marvel um, poster is just something else. And of course, you know, everyone is also thinking about uh, whether Ross finally becomes Red Hulk and will Harrison Ford play Red Hulk? Uh, will he do motion capture or will he have his, you know, his face captured for it and then voice Red Hulk? Who knows what what's going to happen there? But, uh, but regardless of that, I think this is a huge get for Marvel and for Captain America New World Order. I think it's really cool. 
of that. And of course, we can all think of the, the meme potential of interviews for Harrison Ford. All right, moving on. Universal Pictures and Amblin Entertainment are meeting with directors in hope to develop a sequel to the 1996 hit film Twister. The movie actually is getting a jump start because Steven Spielberg himself got his hands on the script by Mark L. Smith, who was one of the writers on the Revenant movie, and really liked it. So he, you know, obviously Amblin Entertainment is his production company, and he went to Universal and was like, we gotta make a Twister movie now. Uh, the movie actually had a director for a bit in Joseph Kaczynski, who of course is coming off uh, Top Gun Maverick, but he had to drop out after committing to the Formula One racing movie with Apple and Brad Pitt. So the search for a new director is on, and some names have leaked out. Jimmy Chin and Elizabeth Chai Vasserheli. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that last name wrong. Uh, the team, they directed Free Solo, the documentary that came out. I also believe they directed something else, or are going to direct something else, but they directed Free Solo. Their names are on the list. Travis Knight, who is the head of Link Studios and director of Kubo and the Two Strings, and Bumblebee is also on the list. There was a third name on the list which was very interesting, which even when I saw the name, I was like, why is that name on the, out of all the the first two? uh, Okay, fair. This one doesn't really make sense. Uh, Dan Trenberg, the director of 10 Cloverfield Lane and Prey, he was reportedly on the list, but he came out on Twitter and said he was not directing the Twister movie. So his name was probably just on some list. They thought they could convince, you know, him to come in and direct the movie. The idea is also to bring back Helen Hunt, and focus on her daughter uh, in the movie, of course. And uh, she's a da- she would be the daughter of her character and uh, the late Bill Paxson's character, uh, who also caught their storm chasing bug. And it would be basically just you know following her. The original was a huge hit, uh, grossing over. I know there's a lot of like like why are they making a sequel to Twister? But looking back at it, the, the original, the first one was a huge hit. And it grossed more than $494 million worldwide. It had an attraction at Universal Studios, which I have a vague memory of going on and doing. And very, very good. And uh, pushed the visual effects game at that point. Uh, And let me say, because I don't know how this happened. It's a good movie. It it is. It, it, It holds up for the most part. But I have ended up watching Twister like every year since the pandemic has started. It feels like Twister is on quite a bit. But I have ended up watching Twister since the pandemic started, like, every year. I don't know why. Again, it's a good movie. It, it is. It, it's, it still holds up pretty well. But when it comes to the visual effects, yeah, there are some spotty spots. You know, some, some spotty shots in, in, in the movie itself. But for the most part, those visual effects of the Twister and everything, they hold up. Especially, you know, now it's easy, you know, to make a thunderstorm or whatever. And, you know, sometimes it, it can look real. Sometimes it can look, you know, very CGI. In Twister, it looks pretty real. It looks as close as, you know, you can get to, you know, filming a real Twister. So I think that I thought that was really cool. The movie also had a great cast, you know, besides, you know, Helen Hunt. She was the female lead. Belle Paxton, of course, was the female lead in that. Supporting roles, you had Philip Seymour Hoffman, who, of course, has also sadly passed away. And every time he's on screen, he hams it up. Oh, man, he hams it up so good. He's just, he's very, very good in that movie. Uh, Jamie Gertz is in there. She plays a supporting role. Alan Ruck and uh, Carrie Ellis is also in the movie. He kind of plays like a swarmy, like, antagonistic bad, you know, I don't want to say the bad guy, because obviously the bad guy is the Twisters in the movie, but he kind of plays like this swarmy, antagonistic force to, you know, our hero characters. It was also co-written by the late Michael Crichton. Yes, th- that Michael Crichton, the guy who wrote Jurassic Park and Westworld and Congo and, and, and all those great, you know, um, sci-fi uh, novels back in the day. Uh, so Twister had a lot going on back in the day. So it makes, it, it wouldn't have made sense, obviously, if they made a, a sequel back then <laughs> but now it, it, it is a little out there also this isn't the first time a sequel to twister has come up last year for the movie's 25th anniversary hunt herself said she wanted to co-write and direct a sequel with uh rafael cassell and davi Dix, who at the time were promoting the tv series to blind spotting which was based off their movie they did in 2018 and helen hunt happens to be in the tv series so she was doing this interview and she said that her sequel would have followed black and brown uh, storm chasers. But the studio, or studios rather, uh, were not giving her the, the time of day, basically. They were, they were not willing to hear her out in any sort of way, shape, or form. Which is kind of disheartening when you think about it. It's like, it's Helen Hunt, you know, you, you, despite, you know, whether her movies you know, hold up or not. She was 
like the 90s it girl one of them at least she you know you had helen hunt in your movie you were bound to be a box office success and um the fact that they wouldn't hear her out on a twister sequel you know seems kind of seems kind of odd especially considering that she wanted to basically make she basically wanted to co-write it herself and direct it herself and seem like she had a story in it so i don't know like people just i don't know i don't know why they wouldn't want to at least hear her out for for it yeah a sequel to twister i wouldn't mind seeing a sequel to twister again i i think it's a little odd that they would wait <laughs> all these years to do one but we'll have to wait and see if this gets off the ground i again i wouldn't mind seeing another twister movie to be completely honest during a live stream called silent hill transmission a new movie along with some new games was announced um but this is pretty cool uh, the movie will be called Return to Silent Hill, which will be directed by the first Silent Hills director, Christoph Gans. Uh, Gans was on hand via a video and said the movie will follow the events of the video game Silent Hill 2. And the movie will also tell the story of a young man coming back to Silent Hill where he, where he was known a great love. And what, uh, he, what he's going to find is a, quote, pure nightmare. The movie is also said to be a pure psychological horror and feature new and familiar monsters and fan favorite pit, uh, Pyramid Head will be receiving a modern update, whatever that means. Uh, the first movie, which I really liked, by the way. I really liked the first Silent Hill movie. It came out in 2006. Uh, I think it's probably one of the better video game adaptations out there, at least in terms of um, feeling as close to the video game as possible. Uh, at least in my opinion, I haven't played that many Resident, uh, Resident Evil. Silent Hill games, wow. Uh, that was a... <laughs> ooh! Uh, but I haven't played that many Silent Hill games, but I think the ones I have played and the game... Uh, the ones I have game and the movie, rather, uh, are pretty close. But uh, there was a sequel in 2012, which wasn't good. Kans, uh, Gans didn't return to direct that. Uh, I'm not saying that's the reason why it wasn't good. Uh, there was a lot of reasons that movie is not good. And Christoph Gans... Uh, is returning it was not the primary one uh, but it should be noted that he did not return for that uh, no word on when production will begin but it does sound like the script is already written or has been written because Gans said that um, he's read the script and it's quote independent from the, pre uh, the two previous movies so I don't know what that means or how it's gonna mean so maybe it could be its own thing if you watch the first two then I guess it would be really uh, I guess Maybe you'll make some connections, but it does sound like maybe this will kind of be its own thing a little bit. Um, but like I said, I, I really like the first one. I really like the 2006 one. And it's, it's a very eerie movie. Uh, I watch it every now and then, especially now during, you know, October and spooky season. I haven't watched it this year yet, but I probably will fix that now, especially since another movie's coming out. But yeah, so if anything, watch the first one. Don't watch the second one. Second one's not good at all. So, yeah. But I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see what they do. Do we need another Silent Hill movie? I don't know, maybe. But I'm, I'm game to watch it again. Or game to, you know, see what uh, they bring with the third movie. Or a new movie. They didn't call it a remake. They are very specific about not calling it a remake. So, that should probably be some good news, I guess, if that's how you want to take it. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for a new Silent Hill movie, for sure. All right, let's get to the last movie news item of the podcast. Uh, with Black Adam out this weekend, DC Films are back in the spotlight, and it looks like DC Films has some ambitious plans for their future slate with some big names and big properties. This news comes from The Hollywood Reporter, so it's a, it's, it's, it was an article they wrote, so I'm, just, I'm really going to go through the whole thing, really, with you guys. So one, I'm going to get to the big news parts first. One, James Gunn, of course, the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy series, the Suicide Squad, and HBO's Peacemaker, is reportedly, quote, angling for their own DC project or two, end quote. The outlet uh, notes that Gunn and producer Peter Safran are in talks with Warners for a, for a mystery movie, possibly more that Gunn would, of course, direct and presumably write. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, obviously, you know, again, the Suicide Squad was a you know, success in, in their eyes. And of course, uh, Peacemaker has been uh, making ways with fans and critics alike. So it would make sense that they would want to keep Gunn around and Gunn would, Gunn has had nothing but positive things to say about the studio and, and everything. Uh, of course, that was the old regime. I don't know how, you know, it would, how the new regime would take it, but uh, I'm pretty sure if they're going to make, if Gunn's going to make them money, I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll take them. But um, it, it, no word on what those projects could be or what that project could be, but um, 
James Gunn with DC hit after hit. So, I mean, you can't really go wrong. Two, the other part, two. A Man of Steel sequel is in the early works with Henry Cavill reprising his role. The outlet notes that writers are being searched for and that there is a wish list with one name making it through the cracks, and that is Christopher McQuarrie, the man behind the recent stretch of Mission Impossible movies and Edge of Tomorrow. It will also be a nice reunion if McQuarrie does take the job because, of course, Cavill starred in Fallout. So, nice little reunion there. And, of course, having a great writer, even if it just writes the movie, Christopher McQuarrie is someone that I would 1,000% go watch a movie if he ended up writing it because it's Christopher McQuarrie. And three, the last news news tidbit here, uh, Matt Reeves, the man behind the Batman, who is currently working on the script for the sequel, is reportedly meeting with writers and directors to, quote, build out movies focused on Batman's rogues gallery, both established and more obscure. And quote, some of the names uh, should make fans happy that were not, that were in that uh, uh, report: Scarecrow, Clayface, and Professor Pig. All of these projects, regardless, are in the very early stages as well. So that's pretty massive. Obviously, you know, uh, Batman has a very impressive rogues gallery. We have seen Scarecrow in the Nolan movies, but I think seeing a Matt Reeves Scarecrow would be re- pretty interesting. A Professor Pig a villain in a you know, Batman movie on the big screen would be also very interesting. And then, uh, of course, Clayface. Clayface, of all people, should be rather interesting. Like, how, how do you approach Clayface? Because obviously in the comics and even the TV show, um, Clayface has always been, you know, just like straight up like a man of clay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Batman took the kind of more realistic approach. How would they do that with Clayface in, in that? Um, I don't know, but it should be interesting to, to see if that what they do with Clayface if they end up making Clayface. I wouldn't mind seeing Clayface, but I would be very interested to see how they, you know, make that decision to put him in the movie like that in a realistic kind of setting tone. But again, I'd I'd still be interested in seeing what they do with that. Uh, The article that uh, The Hollywood Reporter continues with other tidbits here, uh, like J.J. Abrams still wanting to be part of the DC uh, game, because if you remember, there was a uh, Black Superman movie announced years ago that Abrams was going to produce that, like Joker, was going to exist outside the main canon or universe, if you will. Uh, apparently, there's that's still on the table. That project is still on the table, even though there's been no movement on it. Um, but... Um, interesting to see uh what what happens with that plus he's still shopping around his justice league dark movie after it was scrapped by hbo max earlier this year they also went into uh walter hamada the now former head of dc films as he is officially uh done with the company this week after the new regime change and and the batgirl cancellation and everything like that hamada who was already reported that he had to be convinced to stay until Black Adam uh, wasn't even at the premiere of the movie. <laughs> so that should tell you a lot. Uh, and maybe, according to the report, it had to do something with some reshoots involved in Black Adam. I won't spoil what the reshoots involved in case you somehow avoided them online. Unfortunately, they have been spoiled for me. At least one of the aspects of the, of the reshoots have been spoiled for me. But Johnson was very headstrong about getting what happens in those reshoot scene, scenes in the movie. And Hamada said no. So Johnson went over Hamada's head and gave the th- and was given the thumbs up and uh, they got the reshoots done and those reshoots are in the movie. So in which something I find surprising also continuing with this with the story, uh, the report mentions that Johnson could be taking some sort of leadership role for the DC movies, not just like for Black Adam movies, but for other movies as well, because Hamada with with Hamada gone uh, talks and, and talks falling through with Dan Lin, who was, you know, they were eyeing to take over and essentially become their new Kevin Feige or their own Kevin Feige, not new Kevin Feige. Uh, the DC slate of movies don't have someone permanent to take them into the future. They do know that the new Warner Brothers pictures heads Michael DeLuca and Pam uh, Abdi, who y- used to be the heads over, I believe, at MGM. I think that that's where they were. Are uh, they're taking over in the meantime? Obviously, uh, with Deluca being the more hands-on, because um, it's reported that he is a, a favorite, he is or he's a fan of the DC characters and, and comics and stuff like that. So he's going to be more uh, taking the hands-on approach. To that they also noted that some insiders told them there is a script for Wonder Woman three by Batty Jenkins expected to be turned in soon. 
and that a script for the sequel to The Flash has already been written by Aquaman writer David Leslie Johnson McGordrick in case the first movie does well uh, so they can be ready to get started on the next movie. That's pretty bold of them to do, but I get it, you know, especially with the Flash movie, everything that's going on with the Flash movie, uh, with Ezra Miller and um, just the constant production delays and everything else that happened with that movie because they've been trying to get that movie off the ground for so long and now they finally have and they filmed it and um, they did some reshoots recently with Ezra Miller coming back to do those reshoots as well after issuing his apology so yeah uh, I, I definitely would probably try to get you know uh, a sequel ready if it does if it is as good as some you know early reports say that it is and, and that Warner Brothers is very high on on it the Wonder Woman 3 script is interesting because I don't I don't think we've ever I don't think we've heard anything about on a Wonder Woman 3 I'm sure that you know we had assumptions and, and that there would be another movie but I don't think we've ever, ever actually heard that there was going to be a Wonder Woman 3 I forgot to look that up but there is that uh, as for Johnson potentially taking over DC films or at least helping in finding someone to take over DC films I find that very interesting Especially considering how, but also a little worrying because they've been trying to get that Black Adam movie out for so long. And we'll talk about that a little bit, you know, when we get to uh, the movies on theaters this weekend. But that Black Adam movie was in development for a long time. And I'm sure a lot of that had to do with, you know, Johnson finding other projects and other projects coming to him and lining up better than a Black Adam movie. But oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I look, I love Johnson. He's, he's great. He's charismatic. He's, you know, he's funny. He's, 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 he's got it. He's, he's got, he's got it. He's got the it factor. Um, not just in wrestling, but you know, now in, in Hollywood and his name carries weight. And I get that. And I think people need to understand that his name carries weight, but this is a massive undertaking. I don't see him becoming like the head of DC films. Like, no. Do I see him like picking someone out to help them with it? I, don't, I also don't know. Like, he's such a busy guy. Like, he's always working. He's such a busy guy. And then obviously he has, you know, his own family to take care of. It's, I don't know. I just, Johnson being head of DC films or, you know, helping out DC films. It's, it wasn't in my bingo card. Let's just say that uh, for the year. But there is that. But, um, Michael DeLuca taking over makes more sense than, than Johnson does. As for the other stuff, um, like I meant, I, you know, I briefly mentioned that the, you know, the the Batman stuff seemed pretty interesting. I've seen, you know, what they do with that, the James Gunn project. There's just, you know, nothing there to really talk about other than I think it's going to be really cool. But uh, the Man of Steel stuff uh, is interesting because you know they've been talking about doing, doing a Man of Steel project for so long, and then it, 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 they finally get a chance to do it, and nothing came of it. Nothing happened. And uh, now we're here again talking about a potential sequel to Man of Steel and let's see if it works. You know, Henry Cavill has been very open about, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't think he's done playing Superman. He wants to continue playing Superman. And the fact that, you know, they couldn't find a way to do another Superman movie until right now makes zero sense. Like, he wants to be Superman. Let him play Superman. Why won't you let him play Superman? It's, it just seems so dumb. But uh, yeah. That's that's it. That's all the movie news I have for you guys. If anything big drops before I you know upload the podcast, I'll drop it right here. But if not, let's move on to the movies that are coming out in theaters this weekend and streaming for all your viewing pleasures. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. All right, let's talk about the movies that are out in theaters this week, or street out this weekend, not just in theaters. We're talking about streaming movies first. Uh, we have a, a, a few... Uh, yeah, a few that are already out on streaming um, places where you can go watch them. The School of Good and Evil, which is out on Netflix. And honestly, I don't know too much. I think it, uh, I don't know too much about it. But the, the, I think the movie follows uh, two young... I, I didn't write down what it said either. I, I'm just bad today. Um, so it follows uh, two young girls, obviously, who are invited to the School of Good and Evil. I'm just, I'm, I think there's an actual name for it. But And they're kind of, you know, when they get there, they're chosen if they're going to be on the good side or on the bad side and i think these girls get their stuff mixed up because the one who expects is going to the evil side ends up going to the good side and the one who's expected to be the good goes to the evil side so very interesting uh it's also kind of long i i saw it on netflix and it was like over two and a half hours long that's 
interesting uh, that it's that long. But, um, I mean, what are you going to do, right? I mean, if, you, if it's good, you're going to watch it, obviously. It's got a good cast, too, uh, from the looks of it. So uh, there you go, the, the School of Good and Evil. Uh, the next one is VHS 99. This is on Shudder. This is, of course, the uh, horror anthology series, VHS. This is their newest installment, 99. Uh, obviously, uh, taking the uh, 99 approach, I think there's like a New Year's aspect to it as well. Uh, so there you go. I, I seen the trailers and stuff. Uh, it's, it's, there's like clips that have been coming out from the movie that have been going up online. It looks interesting. looks pretty creepy. Um, there's like this monster one at one point that I've seen a clip online of like this monster coming out of like the shadows. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the VHS. I haven't seen a VHS movie in quite some time. I, I watched the first one all the way through. I think I've seen most of the second one. Yeah, I have seen most of the second one, but all the sequels I haven't been following. So I don't have an attachment to the VHS movies. Um, like some other people out there, but I heard the last one was good. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm hoping that 99 is good. I haven't seen any reviews for it. So there you go. That's on shutter. And then on Apple TV plus is Raymond and Ray. Uh, this stars Ethan Hawke and Ian McGregor. We talked about this last week. It got a limited release last week in theaters. It's getting its full push, uh, here on Apple TV plus this week. So let's go to theaters now, and uh, we'll start off with the limited release, the only limited release this week, and that is The Banshees of Ira Sheeran. I think that's how they're pronouncing it. This is the new movie uh, by the director of Three Billboards Outside Epping, Missouri, and in Bruges. Uh, we got an in Bruges reunion, uh, Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. It, it seems really good. It seems like uh, the two of them, it, in the movie, it seems like the two of them are friends, and then one day Brendan Gleeson's character just decides that he does not like Colin Farrell's Colin Farrell's character anymore and he doesn't want to talk to him and he even threatens him at one point and he's like if you talk to me ever again I'm going to chop something off <laughs> and so I guess the movie will be you know Colin Farrell trying to figure out why all of a sudden Brendan Gleeson's character hates him and it takes place in this uh, you know this kind of coastal this fictional coastal town in Ireland and uh, yeah it looks pretty good uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Martin McDowell the director uh, of his work with um, in Bruges and obviously Brendan Gleeson and, and Colin Farrell were really great in that and then of course um, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri has a very divided fan base but uh, I liked what he did it's mainly because I like what he did in, in Bruges and he also did Seven Psychopaths as well which was which was okay um, but uh, there you go. That's your limited release this week. Your wide releases this week. Tickets to Paradise. This uh, follows a divorced couple played by George Clooney and Julia Roberts uh, who team up and travel to Bali to stop their daughter from making the same mistake they think they made 25 years ago, which is getting married, uh, obviously, because they're divorced. Uh, Caitlin Deaver, by the way, plays the plays the daughter in, in the movie. Uh, this, I guess, came out internationally, and uh, it's been making some waves internationally before it's come out here in the states uh, a lot of people seem to really like it and think it's funny and obviously george clooney and, and julia roberts together just gives me oceans 11 vibes because um that's where they, that's where they were connected and obviously romantic comedies julia roberts has her history with them and you got george clooney who of course um you know um charming charming as ever i don't know uh, i saw the trailer for this very briefly um and, and it looks it looks fine it look, it look, it looks fine. It's Julia Roberts, it's George Clooney. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna rush out in the theaters to go watch it, but if you know, drops online somewhere, Prime Video or Netflix or something, I'll give it a watch. But um, it looks, you know, it looks fine. It's not targeted toward me. Put it that way. It's not targeted toward me. And of course, the big movie, like I mentioned earlier, Black Adam. Black Adam is the big movie this weekend. Of course, this movie's been years and years in the making, and it, you know, the, the meme-worthy line of the hierarchy of power is about to change stuff like that yeah this this has been in the works for so long and it, the fact that it's finally hitting the big screen is is, is great uh, it, great because you know you obviously there's a lot of projects in developmental hell that never get out of it and black adam for a long time seemed like that was the case and it's not and reviews so far have been very mixed like seriously like seriously mixed like really down the line but people were saying this movie is actually pretty good people are saying this movie is not good at all that it's not fun that it's not even you know a good superhero movie there was a report that apparently the movie had to tone down its violence because it wouldn't have made the pg-13 rating because it would have been rated r which 
very telling. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, again, this movie's been in the works for so long. I'm just glad that it's finally out in theaters. And my only worry is that, yes, that knowing that this movie has been in the works for so long is going to affect my viewing because knowing how long it's been in the works, knowing, you know, the writers that came through, knowing that the rock is a is a big fan of black adam he obviously wants to do the movie justice and then wants to do the character justice will that happen because if it doesn't happen then all those years of work that you put into it just seems like a waste of time and again people that have seen it very split down the middle 50 percent of the people think that they wasted the time and the other 50 percent think it's it's okay and or, or good so i think that would be my only issue with the movie not having seen it but that is but my only issue with the movie would be that it's you know all those years of trying to get this thing made and it finally comes out and it's not good it it worries me obviously i think the only thing that the other thing that worries me which isn't necessarily an issue that we would have with other movies but the promotion for this movie a lot of it is the same scenes over and over and over again which again i don't mind because obviously you know we talk about how promotional material spoils the movie a lot of times especially movie trailers but i think with black adam it worries me just a tiny bit just because we keep seeing the same stuff over and over again like what else is in this movie like i i I didn't even look up how long the movie was but like did you have you shown me the whole movie have you shown me most of the movie like why are you keep showing me the same thing scenes over and over again unless there's something drastically big at the end of the movie where it's like okay yeah like we yeah you shouldn't have spoiled that but i don't know i just it, it just seems weird and the other thing is you know obviously a lot of the promotion is is the rock obviously you have the rock in your movie he's the big presence he's the main character he's the titled character you're gonna have a lot of promotion you're gonna, a lot of promotion on him but uh the other scene the other part of it seems to be like hawk uh hawkman played by aldris hobbs and uh pierce brosnan playing uh dr fate but you have other characters. You have the Atom, who we do see in the trailers and TV spots and stuff. You also have Cyclone, played by, uh, I forgot her name. I know her first name's Quintessa. I forgot to put down her last name. But you have her. She's barely in the trailers and the TV spots. So I don't know if maybe they're like, they think that she's you know, going to be like a breakout and they're saving her scenes for the movie. And we do see her a little bit, you know, in the trailers and stuff. And I feel like the later trailers, especially more of the, the TV stuff, have shown her character more than anything that we've seen um before previously so i don't know that kind of uh, that doesn't scare me it just makes me interested it's like you yeah i get it it's the rock it's black adam he's been working on this thing the the focus should be on him but why not show her more i think you've shown her very briefly in that kind of i don't know that worries me a little bit for that character uh not that i know not that i'm a a cyclone fan i don't really know the character that well but regardless you know move past that uh but yeah my my hope you know i had something else to say about black adam and i can't think of it now but uh my hope is just that it's good that is my only hope Uh, decent at least at at the very least uh, like i mentioned every now and then on the podcast every movie i watch i want to at least be decent you don't have to be good you don't have to be great you don't have to be awesome as long as you're decent as long as you're fine don't be bad don't be disappointing don't be underwhelming and my hope for black adam is that it's at least at the very least fine or decent those two if it's anything besides fine or decent then i don't know i I, i'm not saying i'm I'm losing hope in the dc movies or losing hope in, in in johnson or anything like that it's just like all those years all those years and this is what you come up with just you couldn't come up with anything else okay fine so we'll have to wait and see Okay, uh, like I said, Black Adam is your big release this week. Uh, Tickets to Paradise is your other one. Uh, the Banshees of your Sheeran is your limited release. And then out on streaming, already out, uh, you have uh, VHS 99 on Shudder, Raymond and Ray on Apple TV+, and uh, The School of Good and Evil up on Netflix. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it. Uh, I apologize in advance if uh, the audio is a little off and if I feel a little off. I am a little off this today, and I apologize for that. But if the audio is off a little bit, if there's like an echo or something in the room, or like a low humming, I apologize for that. It's just the, the specific room that I'm in while recording this podcast. And I wanted to be, uh, I wanted there to be a podcast this week because next week, a little preview for the spooky season uh, listeners out there. Uh, I am delaying the podcast. I will put up a Twitter post uh, explaining why in detail. But basically, I just want to hold off on what the episode was supposed to be on this week. Uh, or next week rather, which is um, the horror movies of, uh, that I've seen this year. And I want to hold off on, on that a little bit because um, there's still some that I want to 
watch, and I think it makes sense to hold it off a little later. So like I mentioned, I'll make a Twitter post about it, and it's probably already up by the time this podcast goes up, but uh, you've probably already seen it. But if you haven't, then you know, go check it out. But, uh, but yeah, spooky season uh, still going on. will still happen. I'll still have an episode on Halloween, which will be about John Carpenter's Halloween. So uh, we'll take a look at that. And I'll, I'll briefly talk about Halloween ends on there as well. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. Everything you need to follow the podcast is down below in the description slash show notes area, social media, where you can find the podcast on other platforms like YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Anchor. If you listen directly from Anchor, all that's up on there. Or all that's down there. Trailers, all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week. Please be safe. Please be careful. And as always, go watch some movies. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Give it up. Movies.